but you know of course you know culture you know there'll be cultural exchange they would you know kind of soak in some local culture food very interesting conversations around food uh, what we eat what what the students eat and and you know stuff like that language of course if if that's also kind of part of the agenda and i think another piece i think is kind of very very important when you know when you kind of spend time with families is you understand about livelihoods and right? you understand about how local families you know meet you know you know meet ensure their ends ends are met how do they make money what kind of roles what are the roles that you know men play women play gender issues and generally what are the way of things in the in the area you know how things work how do you get from point a to point b how do you start a business um you know how do you start a small stall so all these things kind of you know would would, would come in you know these are some of the things that that students will really build a very very good understanding of without actually making a lot of effort you know this would happen because because they will be there right they can also possibly you know interact with the municipal leaders panchayat leaders local leaders and understand a good sense of you know what it is like to work in india and how do you know things happen in india in india how does business happen in india and i feel that you know all these things become like very very potent kind of skills you know for anybody who's so if the students are coming from germany they spend this time in, in in here they go back to germany and who knows tomorrow they are probably coming back to india and and and, and starting a business here or 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 bringing fdi into india or you know working in india and these things will become very very useful you know when uh, that kind of thing uh, happens so one was like you know the couple of ideas around this you know like you spend some you know four to eight weeks either you volunteer with a non profit you live in a village with a family you live with a student family and these things can be both structured and unstructured so for instance you can shadow somebody right you you shadow like the the wage earner of the family one day and just go and what do we do like what time they move out of the house uh, where do they go which office what kind of transportation where do they eat the food and like make some notes uh, around this likewise you can shadow a women who goes out in the in the, if if you are in a village you can shadow a women that goes out you know to maybe uh, cut grass and get water and 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 those things so so all these kind of living uh, this time that they will spend uh, doing this immersion can be both structured and unstructured also and each has its own kind of uh, 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 merits the other way to kind of structure this is is to kind of join and do boot camp so for instance 20 german students with 20 local students right and they they maybe live together right they they cook they study they travel they do classes and with that also you know with um, a lot lot of things that i'm talking about you know the deep rooted understanding of india and and our culture will also kind of uh, build in and plus these my sense is these 40 students will become like friends for life you know they would so that's and that would have its own kind of uh, you know dividends as as these students you know grow up become adults take up jobs and you know do stuff right and the third idea is to if is to kind of say okay if we don't have that kind of time and we don't have you know four weeks eight weeks to give can you organize like a travel workshop for students and and you basically take them to places which are not in a brochure and i'll just give you one example so what if we were to take them into a to a dhobi ghat yeah and they have to figure out how does supply chain management of a shirt that moves from a hotel you know a small hotel with a number on the back of 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 the collar comes to a dhobi ghat gets cleaned gets ironed and there are many players in it and comes back to the um, uh, to the hotel and you know next morning you see your uh, your shirt is there and how does that happen and what does it uh, you know what can it teach us about not only you know global supply chains you know and but also fairly complicated global local supply chains and i think as we kind of you know move forward in uh, you know as the world move forward in the, into the future post pandemic my sense is that 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 like what uh, um, i think the previous presenter i uh, sorry i can't um, i don't can spell your name properly but was talking about decoupling i guess that decoupling is not so much i don't see that happening but i see these global supply chains and local supply chains kind of mixing together but and in a case like that a learning like that in you know place like india where you know uh, things might seem a little bit complex but then you know when you dig deep in there probably 
not so and there is a system in kind of uh, place could be very very useful and like that you take the students to a variety of places um, again with the sense that this immersion this time on the field will actually help them you know pick up really valuable skills skills right but my sense is they'll also build a very good understanding of india and and probably uh you know a special place in their hearts and minds um, for india and, and its people and its culture and and whatever this kind of you know country uh, stands for so my sense is you know like we are exploring in ups that educational institutions because of the work that they do the extension activities that they do the multiple research projects that they have across across the country can easily you know with a little bit of effort can easily offer these kind of immersion opportunities um in and around their communities and i feel this is a real value and a, you know and a very very rich link between uh, india and germany if we were to offer uh, these kind of uh, immersion programs and i feel that it has such a unique value that it might actually increase uh, more students you know interested in coming to india and uh, and doing these things and because you remember the po in post pandemic Uh, world in in the in the world of webex and and zoom a lot of students are asking this question do i need to spend 3 years at the same institute you know or can i spend like some time in the institute some time doing things like like i i i mentioned you know and uh, so so the traditional way of you know looking at education in my opinion is kind of uh, disrupted if you were to offer something like this to our students my sense is that they would like kind of you know grab it up so with that thanks very much i mean and uh, yeah and i'm happy to take questions great thanks a lot rahul wonderful wonderful ideas all the things you said and uh, really interesting stuff maybe i have a question that goes one step back uh, mm -hmm. you can do all these things that you said i'm sure they're very useful and also implementable for many institutions once the students are here but yeah. you mentioned towards the beginning of your presentation that there's a challenge of building partnerships mm -hmm. with institutions uh, educational institutions abroad so maybe on on that step for mobility to happen you first need to have that partnership so mm -hmm. what are the some of the challenges that you generally were would face and are there any interesting insights as solutions as to how one could overcome those sure so i think i mean uh, i can talk about what what are some of the challenges that we um, we, we are working around so when we are reaching out to educational institutions outside i think uh, we are going there with a very generic kind of a program so okay these are some of the things that we can possibly do and i think the uh, the response more often than not we get is um, we have a group of uh, students who would be very interested in this but their interest is in mental health right so what then happens is that if i were to approach 25 institutions across the world i might have to create 25 different programs and that sometimes might just take away all our bandwidth um, uh, to kind of do something like this so i think if you know it was like a more like, like i explained there was like three buckets uh, one stay in a family second do a travel workshop third you know look at india the way we have never looked at uh, if we could like really partner institutions on something like this i think um and demonstrate some of these values uh then i think uh, we'll be in a much better spot i think that's wonderful thank you so much for this answer and with this looking at the clock also maybe it's time to wind up the session for today i'd like to thank all the speakers of this particular session for their wonderful inputs and i'd also like to once again encourage all the participants who have joined us for this session that one can connect one on one uh with any of the speakers that are here on this panel over the next couple of days our tool does allow you to fix individual meetings and then meet up at a time that is suitable to you i do encourage you to make use of that as far as possible and before i end this session also one more a little in piece of information that we have the last session for the day which is coming up now the minute we end this we will start the next session in exactly 2 minutes time which will be on the role of the alumni relations in internationalization another very interesting topic so with this i wish you all a wonderful evening ahead a great two or three days of the conference ahead and uh, enjoy the next session thank you for joining and take care thank you and bye bye